There's a lot of earthquakes in this attack. 30 rock doubloons. He's got the spiky ball. He's going to go with, it looks like a fireball. This is definitely interesting. Today's match is Reckoning versus our defending world champions over in HTM. And if you haven't seen this Reckoning roster, they've had some shakeups recently that have definitely bolstered this roster. And they're a world-class team. This is going to be a good match here. And since they're playing on hard mode, we're going to get some entertainment out of it as well. So let's see what happens here as Morio kicks us off here, playing out of STK. He used to play for Navi, if you remember. He had a little tryout there for a little while, so always nice to see him find a nice home there in STK, along with a lot of the other top end pro players. It just got swept up like by them. Like uh, you see, like Ryuta, the Romi obviously was the team captain that uh, was able to form this team. Just an all around stellar roster. But it doesn't matter how good your roster is if you can't get the town hall down. And right now, the town hall is struggling to drop. He's going to have to find a backup method to go after it. If he can't get it down with his dragon, he's going to invest a rage and a freeze. To ensure that it drops, but he's got an Eagle Artillery Strikes on his way in. And it's going to hit, but he gets it down right in time before the last strikes of the Eagle Artillery are able to stop that dragon. But now the question is, can he finish it? We do expect that most hard mode matches are not going to go to the double perfect. And so mistakes like that could ultimately cost you. But it looks like he is potentially recovered here. Just need to get to, to that multi-inferno. He's got the queen still alive. He's got the rage onto the healer puppet that was able to get her through. And obviously with the giant arrow there, which is very, very popular among these pro players. If he can just get the queen to stop attacking the wall. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, nice. She's chasing the ground skellies. That's what she's doing. I was like, why is she attacking the wall? She was trying to get to the ground skellies. Obviously, those will draw aggro and pull her away. But he does get the triple on the board. And now we'll see what HTM can do. Achilles is in for HTM. Looks like a giant arrow shot across the top of the base. Looks like we're going to see some root riders here, and riders can be one of the most effective attacks in Clash of Clans esports on hard mode and regular mode. But often, when the root riders ultimately have to skip the town hall and they go back for it, which is the common way that they like to use the overgrowth, then it can cause a lot of one stars. We've seen it many, many times before, and I, I know. That a lot of people like to skip through the Rebettas, but these attacks often are the ones that make or break the war. So you have to pay attention to see if they are going to have a mistake to ultimately cause them because it can be the hinge point. But the king down south, like the king getting a funnel to walk into the open quarter down there. Did he, did he break the wall? I guess the yak broke the wall down there. Or the yak with the king is kind of an interesting choice. Also, a lot of people have been pointing out recently that they've been... A lot of these people, when they go with the giant arrow and the healer puppet, we see a lot more people breaking out Frosty, and the Frosty just uh, helping the queen get some extra freezes to slow down the attack speed of the defense on the outside of the base, ultimately help her survive out there. And it's kind of an interesting thing that it took a little while for that meta to develop, but we're seeing a lot of use out of the Frosty on the queen when she has that specific hero equipment combination. So nice job to Achilles. It is a triple, and the war is tied up. We're seeing the spiky ball with the giant gauntlet a lot from these high-end pro players, but still, running common equipment there on the queen seems to be the most popular choice there, even among the top pro players that have the new magic mirror unlocked and leveled up there. So it is interesting to see such a high use rate of this equipment, the common equipment, and I guess it does give some hope into the meta there that you don't have to go in with only the extreme high-end equipment. Obviously, everybody needs a max giant level or giant gauntlet to be able to support any attack that you're doing. But it is interesting also to see the rage gem on the board in here. Almost always in attacks that we bring a bunch of rages, you almost always want the healer or the healing tome to be able to heal up the dragons to increase their longevity. But he's also on top of all that, making the overgrowth lock out the town hall right now. And so he needs to get set up to go in there. And I feel like he was supposed to have either the dragons or something go in there and pick up this multi inferno that's wrecking the queen's healers right now. And so he could ultimately have that be a big problem. But he'll quake out. There, okay, that's, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. That spiky ball earthquake trick strikes again and will carry the attack. Nice job to Ryuta. Nice setup right there. And they often do that where they just kind of hold the spiky ball until right as the overgrowth wears off. And they set it up there long in advance so they can do exactly that to wipe out that area the moment the overgrowth wakes up. And it does get the job done. I do really like the earthquake spiky ball trick there. That is definitely something that I think a lot of people should take note of. If you are level up the spiky ball, we've seen that little trick there carry a lot of attacks there to great effect. So it's definitely something to take note of, but it's time to get into Leo now. We have another root rider attack. HTM definitely leaning on the root riders out of the gate here. 
we're going to see the main force with the Druids going over the far right, running the Rage Gem on the Warden. And we do see that when you see these ground attacks. I was definitely surprised to see it during the Dragon attack. And so in the in this style of attack here, we can use the Rages to boost the Queen's healer so she can pop up with the Giant Arrow right at the start there. Once again, using the Frosty on the Queen so that she can throw Frost Mites. But unfortunately, when we do go directly into a Ricochet Cannon, Whatever pet that you have, it's, if it's on the ground, is going to die almost right away. And there's not a lot that you can do about it. We will overgrow out the Town Hall. The Rebrettas keep on working across the right side of the base. And up at the top of the base, there the Siege Barracks and the Road Champion were able to work together. Now with Valkyrie's dropping the Siege Barracks, we'll work along the outside of the base. But we got to pay attention to the Queen here. Queen making her way into this bottom compartment. More rage is invested into her. Where's the King, though? The King is right with the Root Riders, and the Rotas are going to open up the access for him to continue on. And it does look like he's running the spiky ball with the giant gauntlet. And he's not going to be able to do the earthquake trick here, but he's going to be able to hit every single remaining building. And it looks like he will get it done. Have to go back over to the last storage. And with the way that these two teams are playing right now, and the way that we expect them to play, considering they're some of the best teams in all of Clash of Clans esports, we will check the time here to see if we do have the case of the double perfect. Who will stay in the lead? And right now, it is in the favor of HTM Esports. We have Reckoning going in for a Root Rider attack of their own. Once again. Nope, just not not once again. Meebot is going to be breaking out the Frozen Arrow here. And I have to question the hero equipment choice there. Because I, I know that the Frozen Arrow can be good. But often, with the prevalence of the other equipment, I have to wonder if he just doesn't have the Healer Puppet and the and the giant arrow leveled up there because i personally i know i don't and you can see that he's also number five in the war so maybe that's an indication that he's the lowest level account on the war and may not have all the same tools as everybody else there but let's see if the rotis can get it done anyways as we do have all the super barbarians that can support the backside the overgrowth will lock out the town hall and we do see like honestly a lot of really really low level equipment here only level 23 on the giant gauntlet he does have the max level uh healing tome which obviously can carry and pretty close to max on the Royal Champion equipment. So he's definitely at the biggest disadvantage out of every single player here. And we do see over to the right side, the Queen making her way past the Monoth there. A nice place scale to spell, disabled Monoth, but he still has the defensive Queen and the single foot on the far back side of the base there. And he still needs to make his way back into the Town Hall. And right now, the Town Hall is questionable. Uh-oh. Okay, RC, 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 can we carry here? RC has to get past the ricochet cannon. He's going to throw down the wall breakers and everything he can to try to provide some distraction. RC, hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. Get this town hall down. RC steps in. Gets smoked, Ed. Question is, can he get it down here? Last couple of troops here. There's still a P.E.K.K.A. I wonder if the P.E.K.K.A. can ultimately power through the walls. How much does it have? Not a lot. Uh-oh. Oh, go. oh, no, guys. This is bad. This is really, really bad. Um. <laughs> oh, rip. Rip the dream. Rip the dream. It is a one star for me, but no way to pick up that town hall. The RC did not have the punch. And that was probably his only chance to be able to get it down. So Reckoning is going to be at the disadvantage. I told you we're probably not going to see the double perfect war. And right there, you see it happen before your eyes. And honestly, we've seen so many one stars with so many people risking town halls at town hall 16 in these hard mode wars. I could definitely see it happening on the other side here. And so HTM cannot let their guard down. There's a lot of earthquakes in this attack. 30 rock balloons. He's got the spiky ball. He's going to go with, it looks like a fireball. This is definitely interesting. But I want to see not only the earthquake tricks with the town hall takedown. I also want to see it with the spiky ball here because we haven't seen a lot of people using that. But town hall doesn't go down. He combines the fireball and the giant arrow to try to secure the town takedown with the earthquakes and he does not get it however we see the king drop at the very top of the base to go in with the rock balloons and the skeleton spell to make your way make his way through that top area but he will go ahead and blimp out the the uh, monolith at the very top and he'll put a couple rock balloons to go finish off the town hall and that should get the job done i feel like it's an over commitment to rock balloons right there that was probably a bit too much there because it was so, such low hp and he already got down the battle builders that potentially could have healed it back up there so it wasn't recovering and on the, at the same time, he also has the World Champion for the far right side of the base with the Rocket Spear and the Sinking Shield. So lots and lots of damage equipment. But we see that the World Champion set up the King. And now he's got a, a nice clean shot with a, a spiky ball to bounce through the middle of the base here. So here, get ready for the spiky ball trick. There it is. Bouncing through the core of the base, wiping out everything. And that should get the job done. Spiky ball trick is taking over the meta right now. 
in Clash of Clans Esports. It's very, very powerful. Looks like he'll step his way through. And come on, get this down. Come on, last balloon, last balloon. Get that strike in. That oh. All right, well, that cost him a bit of time. It's a good thing time is not a factor right now because he's obviously got plenty of force here with the king still moving, and he will step in and finish the job. So, honestly, not a lot of troops there survived at the end. But you know what? It's a triple, and that is going to establish a two-star lead for HTM Esports. That was a very, very nice attack there from HTM, but we're going to see something similar in response on the other side. And here we go again. Lots of earthquakes. Fireball to set it up, and there's the giant arrow. That one was successful, but now... We have the extra earthquakes here. We got the spiky ball. And we're going to see a very similar attack here out of Naomi. We'll see if he can execute it better. Because honestly, the last one, as cool as it was, it came very, very close to not going through. So down south, the queen will have some head on her way. But she's got the poison down. He's uh, He's got that under control. He was able to sail a blimp over. Or was it a slammer? He's put, he put something over the head of the queen there. Just kidding. I... I was completely off right there. He actually dropped the slammer to the far left side of the base, dropped out a super dragon into that far left compartment. But the Roar Champion makes her way in with the Rocket Balloons over the far right. The Warden did survive after dropping in that fireball, and he'll continue across the top of the base there and do cleanup because, you know, he doesn't want a piece of the action there as everybody else charges towards the middle of the base. But because the middle of the base there can be the most troublesome spot for these fireball attacks, we need to see the king take it out with the spiky ball and we also have to consider that he already put down the earthquake so the area has been getting healed up there by the raised up battle builders so that's going to be a potential problem but i don't even see the king on the board wait a second where did the king go did he already pop the spiky ball did it just not take out anything in the middle there i i didn't even see it i was just looking for those defenses to be immediately removed and obviously that didn't happen but Looks like the Warden will step his way forward, and this is a problem right now. It is going to be another defense, and I do want to go take a look back and see what happened with the King. King actually took a lot of damage really, really early on to the Defensive Road Champion, and the Ricochet Cannon over there. And if he didn't get the Spiky Ball to bounce through the middle of the base there, then obviously he's going to be trouble. So when the King went to ability early without the proper tanking, that ultimately cost him the attack. So that's something we have to think about there when we see that attack to make sure that we ultimately have that spiky ball and the earthquakes get their maximum effect. And obviously that is the failure point of the attack here. But now HTM is gonna be in a massive, massive lead as we see the next attack, the Electro Dragons making their way for the far right side of the base. The, the Slammer making his way in the top quarter. Queen working to the far right, both working together to establish the funnel. Super Dragon drops out of the Slammer and down south, we do see the King making his way forward. They're running the vamp stash with the spiky ball. We actually saw this method first used by Gaku from Navi and we've been seeing a lot of other teams there start to implement in attacks to try to get more value out of the king when he works on the outside flank of the base but if the king can pop oh there's a spiky ball he, he pops it but he's not going to be able to actually survive right there he definitely needs to stay in a really low damage area to be able to take advantage of that but the spiky ball does get some good value and I have to wonder if he could have survived longer if he ran the giant gauntlet because obviously the Vamp Stash is nice if you're going to be in a low damage area and you're not going to be forced to ability so you can get the longevity of the King to be able to carry you through the attack. But in this case, it looks like the Road Champion's going to do the carry. She's got the Hogbone and Haste file. She easily marches him through the base and it is going to be another triple for HTM. And at this point, Reckoning's on the rope. Let's see their final attack here and I want to see if HTM can push this to a perfect war on hard mode, which like you said, is quite a rare thing. There is always the possibility that we could see a zero star. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time we ever saw a zero star in esports, especially if there's like a disconnect. So needless to say, Reckoning needs to give it their all here on the final attack and make sure that this one has the best chance of going through. And it looks like we're gonna see the giant arrow on the left side of the base, or the top side of the base there. What was that left, right, top? Uh, everywhere. It's probably everywhere. But a spiky ball bounces through across the right side of the base. There's the king goes to an early ability. Run the giant gauntlet. Giant gauntlet giving him damage reduction on top of that. And that's why in that other attack, the damage reduction can definitely do a lot. Also be able to power through walls and hit the things on the other side of the wall. I think that's why that vamp stash was probably a poor choice there on that previous attack. But on this one, it is getting the job done. The king is tanking for the queen. The root riders continue to make their way towards the middle of the base. And he does have the overgrowth locking out the town hall area but he also wall breaks to get the pegasus and the wizards through the town hall and if he freezes right there all these wizards could actually probably smoke the town hall like keep an eye on that watch the town hall be ready for a freeze and let's see if that actually happens because like those wizards are in a perfect position 
be able to turn around and take it. There's the freeze. Come on. Okay, they're all walking away. Where are they going? Okay, good. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, he's gonna have to go to it with something else there. Like they for a second, for a second, they were all right there. And the town hall will drop there. The Rubites will get it done. So now, the only question left here is will HTM get the perfect war or does something catastrophic happen? Bernal is in for the final attack of the war. Looks like he started off with a giant arrow through the middle of the base or just it wasn't the middle actually. He actually shot it from the right side to shoot across to the top corner, picking up an air defense up in the very top corner to make so those two dragons up there could form the funnel on that edge of the base. And then the queen could get the funnel on the right side of the base there, immediately sniping off that uh, air defense that she stepped into. But the king bounces in the far left side of the base there, taking the expo, but these skeleton spells are protecting her champion right now. Down to the back side there, he's got the two earthquakes here. We see a spiky ball. We do. Spiky ball with the vamp stash. This king needs to stay alive long enough to be able to take advantage of the spiky ball trick. Otherwise, he's wasting those earthquakes and wasting the equipment that he brought here. But the king's still sticking in there. King. Okay, he's, he's lined up right now. He's lined up right now. He can pop the spiky ball. He's got the overworld broken up. There it is. Spiky ball wipes out the majority of the inside of the base. Bouncing through the overgrowth area. It just took a little bit of patience there to line up the shot. But he ultimately gets the job done. And would you have it? HTM Esports has a perfect war on hard mode. Not a simple task there. And we are wishing HTM luck is to get ready for the last chance qualifier. Obviously, they can hone their skills with these hard mode matches. And make so that they are keeping their speed up there as they get ready to play in the last chance qualifier as they will try to turn their silver ticket into a golden ticket and make it into the world champion to go defend their title. So we wish them luck there. They're definitely playing on point and on hard mode or normal mode, they're one of the most difficult teams in all of Clash of Clans esports to beat. So we wish them luck. But thanks for watching. Like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one. It's spiky ball season. Absolutely.